Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeatingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has to Beat Alone, my weekly open workshop to make sure that every beater around the world has company. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. You can watch this video, this workshop live from the Beading School Club and the Beading School Facebook page. And later we will also upload it to our YouTube channel. I see Claire already saying hi. God, this is hi, curly girl. Yes, my curls are back. After my lawyer look, when I visited the hairdresser earlier this year, my usual wild, <laughs> not behaving curls are finally back. I feel so much better, by the way. Claire says she can hear me and see me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for letting me know, Claire. And hi, Kathy. I'm glad that you made it today. I hope you had a wonderful day in school and sunshine and Faye and Antoinette. Today we are going to be the Mary Star motif. I made my Mary Star into an earring, but it can be anything that you would like it to be. And Today's No One Has to Be the Lone meeting is truly special because of two reasons. First of all, this beautiful little motif got its name, Mary, from our fellow, after our fellow Beading School Club member, Sunshine, whose name is Mary Beth, <laughs> by the way, not legally Sunshine. I was surprised by that. <laughs> so Mary Beth designed this beautiful star a couple of weeks ago after she received the jewel of the Maharaja box. So everything what was used in the star, then it comes actually from the box originally. So if you still have some leftovers from your Maharaja box, then it's easy to grab the components that you need from there. And Beth was so nice that actually we asked her, we liked it so much, we talked about her beautiful motif at our weekly creative team meeting with Zuzi, that it's such it's it's just such a beautiful motif that we would like to ask Beth if she would allow us to draw a tutorial and to bring her beautiful star to no one has to be the long. And Beth said yes. And actually, that's one of the things that we were working on during the past weeks. And this is the first tutorial that we bring to you, to no one has to be the loan, and also to the brand new be, uh, made by Beading School Club members section of the Beading School Beat Shop when we beat together a design designed by a fellow beater from the club. And you ladies are so creative and amazing and open hearted in the club. It's wonderful always to see your creativity and your generosity towards each other. And after actually we started to work together with Beth, then she suggested that we should use today's, uh, today's uh, uh, income generated by this tutorial to support Ukraine's fight for freedom and democracy. So today there is actually no free version of the tutorial available at novanhastobeadalone.com. You can download the tutorial for five euros and for two weeks we are going to be collecting your donations and then sending it together exactly in two weeks on the 29th of March uh, to an organization that is supporting Ukrainian refugees. 
So thank you so much, everyone who already contributed. And please let your bidding friends know what is happening. All 100% of the income will be from the tutorials will be donated to a charity that is supporting uh, Ukrainian refugees. And a little info how generous the bidding school community is, how generous you ladies are right? and kind hearted you ladies are. In about 20, 30 minutes after I published the tutorial, already 20, so about one tutorial every minute, were bought by you. So already during the first half hour, we could generate together 100 euros that can go to help Ukrainian refugees. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, for downloading the tutorial, and please tell about it to your friends so they can join in too. And in the meanwhile, lots of readers joined live. Just a quick look at the comments. Hi, Liv, and Sarah, and Donna, and Marianne, and Christine, and Michelle, and Gunnel, and Sherry, and Cynthia, and Marta, and Corinne, Patty, Bonnie, Malka, Ula. By the way, Ula and Katya, thank you both for proofreading the tutorial. It's always a great help, and thank you for uh, stepping up and donating your time and Natalie and Joanna oh Joanna has a day off so she can spend time with us I have Facebook user friend Beth herself is here with us by the way Brit Marie Tanya <laughs> Zuzi, Jessica, Miriam so Let's see, ladies, what do we need today to beat Mary's star? I will also put my hand cam on the screen already so I can show you my colors. Kata had an idea actually to beat this star in the colors of the Ukrainian flag. So I will actually also do that. So I selected blue and yellow and golden toned beads. And I'm curious that what kind of beads you are selecting. So we will need some gem duos. My gem duos are blue turquoise with a gold splash effect. We will also need a four millimeter uh, rhinestone. So one rhinestone from Preciosa. I selected a Montana, so one rhinestone in a gold colored setting that will go into the middle. The original I have an Aqua Bohemica. Then we also need some three millimeter Preciosa bicon beads. I'm going to work with one of my favorite colors, the full coated crystal orum. That means that the crystal beads are fully covered by this beautiful metallic golden coating. That's one of the most elegant beads, I think, that really adds, adds a nice sophisticated touch to the designs. We will also need for the base of the uh, of the star some slender bugle beads. That's where we are going to start actually by creating a star-shaped motifs from the uh, Miyuki slender bugles. So I selected some metallic bronze six millimeter Miyuki slender bugles. So they will blend in into the other colors, and then we will need two or three different kinds of Miyuki round seed beads. We are going to need one or two colors, depending on your personal uh, preference, one or two colors of Miyuki round 15s. I'm going to combine two colors, just as uh, Beth did 
uh, in the original. The yellow one is Miyuki number 2311, and it's a matte, cheerful uh, tone of yellow. And even if using this cheerful ye yellow, I want to make this pendant elegant. So then I'm going to switch for my second color for the 190, the nickel plated. And then we need size 11 round seed beads. And those I have in the same metallic bronze color as my slender bugle beads. So that's, uh, that's going to blend in tool. Do you have any questions about the material that we are going to use today? And in the meanwhile, please make sure to download the tutorial. Today, as I mentioned, there is no free version of the tutorial available. Instead, uh, we are going to collect all the income generated by the sales of the tutorial. And in two weeks time, we are going to donate it to an organization supporting Ukrainian refugees. So in the meanwhile, I managed to drop my thread and needle. So after an intermezzo of finding my thread and needle, let's start beading. <laughs> or actually I will I will just grab a new piece of thread. I'm a bit clumsy. I have to today I have to admit I was up working, drawing late for already two days this week. So I don't want to drop accidentally anything. So I'm grabbing a new piece of thread, my usual fire line, and let me find you a needle. Anna's asking for the size of the bicons. They are three millimeter big. And if you would like to switch to fire polished ones, then you might need to adjust the number of seed beads or maybe you will use only a bicone and not a combination of bicone and seed bead at the tip of the star. But I haven't tested yet. I tested it only as the original pattern says with the three millimeter bicone. So you will need to try it and see if, if the stuff substitute works. And Sunshine says in the meanwhile that she's going to use the same gem duos as I have on my on my uh, bead mat. That's so fun. So I'm going to hide now the original picture and put my illustrations on screen. During the first steps, we are creating this star-shaped star-shaped base for the star. And later we are going to decorate it, fill in every diamond shaped part of the star with the gem duo and some seed beads. But first we are creating this base and then let's talk about the rest later. So the first task is to create a hexagon made of six millimeter Miyuki slender bugle beads. In the first step, I pick up three pieces of Miyuki slender bugles on my needle. As always, I leave a 10, 12 centimeter, five, six inches long thread. And then I bead through all of them one more time. I create a little triangle 
and I finish step one by beading through the very first Miyuki bugle bead again. So this is how it looks like. This is the first sequence of my hexagonal shape. In step two, I pick up two more Miyuki bugle beads and I bead through the bugle that my thread is hanging from. And this way I create a second triangle. The two triangles are touching each other and they have one common side, one common wall. And then I bead through both of the bugle beads that I picked up to get in position to start step three. So now it looks like this, two triangles joined to each other. In step three, I'm already halfway. I will be already halfway when I finish step three. So I pick up two more triangles and again I bead through the bugle that my thread is hanging from. And this time I'm beading only through the first bugle that I have added. So I already have half of this hexagon. three triangles joined to each other. Please let me know, ladies, how is it going? If this part so far was understandable, if I explained it well to you, or if you have any questions, please let me know. And in the meanwhile, like, <laughs> You were so kind, you gave me so many compliments on my new hair color, thank you so much. <laughs> and hi, Nicoline, and hi, Miriam. Cynthia says, so far, so good. If there are no questions, then let's go to step four. In step four, again, I'm doing the same. So boring, right? I pick up two fugal beads and to get in position for the next step, I bead through. I bead it through the bugle that I was exiting at the beginning, and then I bead through both bugles that I have added. So now I have one, two, three, four triangles, and I'm going to create the fifth one is step five. I pick up two more Miyuki Slender bugle beads, and I bead through the bugle that I was exiting. Five triangles prepared already. And in step six, I'm joining the first and the last triangle to each other with adding, by adding only one new Miyuki bugle bead as I already have the one, two, three, four, five, six Miyuki bugle beads running towards the center of the hexagon, but I have only one, two, three, four, five of the Miyuki bugle beads that are on the outside edge of the hexagon. So I need to add that very last Miyuki bugle to create the sixth side of the hexagon. So I get into position by beading one bugle bead, so my thread is hanging towards the outside of the hexagon. I pick up a bugle and I join the very first and the very last one. Hi, Maria. Good to see you. So 
So this part is actually right angle weave, but instead of the usual four beats per step, we were picking up only three beats per step. So that's why it felt a bit different. But you see, you can create even this hexagonal shape with right angle weave. So there are lots and lots of possibilities. And let's move on. Now we are going to make a star from our hexagon. That means that on every side of the hexagon, on the outside edge, we are adding a triangle to create a star from the hexagon. And in between, we are adding size 11 round seed beads. On the points of the stars and also here, into these gaps. However, the round 11s that go into these gaps, where I'm pointing with my needle at the moment, they are a bit tricky as it would be easy to add them in a way that their hole is parallel with the Miyuki bugles running on the outside edge of the hexagon. However, we need to turn them to the other side. So the whole of the round 11s in these gaps needs to be parallel with the holes of the bugle beads running towards the center of the hexagon. So that's going to be a bit tricky. Make sure to follow the tutorial carefully and please ask your questions if you have any. And I'm really grateful for, uh, to Beth, actually, for showing me this trick. And it's a really nice possibility to create, to create shapes. So I beaded through a Miyuki bugle beads on the outside the edge of the hexagon to get in position to start step seven. First, in step seven, I pick up two new Miyuki bugle beads, and I bead one more time through the bugle that I am exiting. And this way, I create a new little triangle. This is going to be one tip of the star. And the diamond that I was talking about, where we are going to attach the gem duos, is created always from in an outside triangle and let's say an inside triangle, where the two triangles share one, uh, one bugle beads. So this is where we are always going to attach a gem duo in the middle of a diamond, be a diamond shape, and then we will frame it with some seed beads. So step seven, we created the first outside triangle. In step eight, we are adding the round 11s around this outside triangle and also getting in position for step nine. To do that, I bead through the first bugle that I picked up for the outside triangle. I pick up around 11. If you allow me, I will actually switch the colors of my round 11s because I want to create a bigger contrast. I did not realize that they will blend in next to each other so much. And I want you to really see what's happening. So let me please give a moment let, uh, and I will find another, another uh, color. I'm going to use the matte nickel plated the 190. F to create a contrast between the round 11s and the Miyuki bugle beads. So I'm at the tip of the outside triangle. I pick up a round 11 seed bead and I bead through the second 
Miyuki bugle that I picked up in step seven. You need to be careful not to create gaps in between the beats. I don't want to repeat the thread passes many, many times because the beats fill up and we will need to cross through some, them more times. So please be careful so you don't create gaps between the beats. Now my thread is hanging from a Miyugi bugle in the outside triangle. I pick up a new uh, a new uh, round 11 and I bead towards the center of the hexagon. So the round 11 snapped into its place nicely. Now I bead towards the outside edge of the hexagon. I pick up a third round 11 and I bead again towards the tip of the outside triangle through a bugle. I bead through the round 11 on, at the very outside and I'm repeating this part of the thread pass again towards the middle by beading through bugle round 11 then another bugle now I'm in the middle of the motif and I need to get in position for step nine. To do that, I bead through a bugle towards the outside edge of the hexagon. And then I bead through this one, which is like the next, next side, the second, second bugle bead on the edge of the hexagon. And now, during the next step, I'm going to add this second pointy part of the star. Please let me know, ladies, that if this is clear or if you need any more explanation, this is a tricky pattern. So don't hesitate to ask questions, please. If there are no questions, then let's see what's happening in step nine. First, just as in step seven, I pick up two new Miyuki bugle beads and I bead one more time through the bugle that I am exiting. So I created this so-called outside triangle that is the tip of the star. I bead through the first Miyuki bugle. I pick up around 11. I bead through the second Miyuki bugle. And then I bead through around 11 that I picked up during the previous step. And then directly a Miyuki bugle towards the middle of the motif. Now I bead towards the outside edge through a bugle. I pick up another round 11 and I repeat the thread pass through the, this is the second diamond where I'm going to attach a gem duo. So, I'm repeating the thread pass on the outside edge of the gem duo. Now I actually created a little gap. I was not so careful with my thread tension. So I need to 
Make sure that the star is pointy. Hi Esther, good to see you. And also we have a Facebook user friend, I don't see your name, who says hi, hello everyone. If you are watching from the Beading School Club, then it can happen that I don't see your name and face because you need to give permission to my broadcasting program. So then I can greet you personally. So now I retraced the thread path on the outside edge of this second diamond shape and I'm turning to the right through the next bugle on the edge of the hexagon. And I need to repeat this three more times, so I need try to be fast. creating a triangle for the outside. Ladies, by the way, do you have any questions or please let me know that if it's working well for you, I would love to know if it's okay. I'm feeling now in the round 11 on the tip of the star. Now through the round 11 added in the previous step, then through the bugle towards the middle Next bugle towards the edge and adding a third round 11. There need to be always, if you look at this triangle, this outside triangle, then at every corner of the triangle, we need to have a round 11. Sunshine so far so good. I'm glad to hear that, Miss Designer. <laughs> <laughs> Robina is here too from Texas. Welcome, Robina. It's nice to have you here with us. And then we have a Facebook user friend. I don't see your name, unfortunately. She says, Hi everyone, it seems like forever since I have been able to join. No bidding today, just stopped in to say hi. And I'm glad that finally you could make it. Robina is also watching. So now I retraced my diamond and I bead through the Next, Miyuki Bugle on the edge of the hexagon. Kimberly Martin here! And Katya joined us. <laughs> Katya was our second proof reader today. Ula helped out also and Katya. And of course, Mary bet herself after I created the tutorial, then of course she checked it if she approves. <laughs> Beating towards the edge, adding the third round 11 on the third corner of the outside triangle. Retracing the diamond. And finally, getting in position to add the fifth outside triangle. And I'm curious, ladies, what kind of colors did you choose for today's motive? Let me know in a comment. And what are you going to be? Is it going to be earrings like I did with my first one or something else? My first pairs 
an earring. The second one is a UF foil. Oh, so I need to finish that. But my first is a, an earring with the motif attached on a filigree. One of the new shapes from the historic collection. And my second, my second version, the one that I am beading today in the colors of the Ukrainian flag. I hope to make it into a brooch. I have to look into my stash if I still have a brooch base that would fit this motif. I really hope I do. <laughs> My fifth triangle is ready. I just went through the bugle beads, bead towards the middle of the tri uh, of the hexagon. I bead through the next one to the outside, and then to get in position for the sixth final one, I bead through this sixth final empty bugle. We will continue with step 11. Ginny is here. Sherry likes the version with the filigree. I wanted to make it bigger. So I think it's it looks nice. I'm glad you like it too. Cynthia will make a pendant. Mariana is using the original colors of the from the box. Oh, Lisa says it's her first time watching live. That's wonderful. I'm glad that you made it, Liz. Are you also beading or just watching now? I'm waiting for Liz's answer. I will add the last sixth outside triangle. To do that, I pick up two Miyuki Bugle beads and just as before, I bead through the bugle on the edge that I was exiting. Now I bead through the first new one. I pick up around 11 and I bead through the second new Miyuki bugle bead. I bead through the round 11 picked up during the previous step and also I bead through the Miyuki Bugle paralleled it towards the middle of the motif and then right away towards the outside edge through a bugle and through a round 11. And I already finished my circle and that means that at this spot, I'm beading through a round 11 that I picked up at the beginning when I started to add the round 11s. And I don't need to add a new one. To check yourself, you can always like count that how many beads do you have in the same position. Since it's a a shape which has six points, six corners, then you need six bugles towards the middle, six bugles that are in the middle of the diamond shapes now, that were originally on the outside edge of the hexagon. You need six round 11s at the crossroads, let's say. <laughs> you need six points of the stars, six outside triangles. That means 12 bugles here all together. And you need, again, six round 11s on the points of the star. And then to get in position for the next part, I beat through a bugle, a round 11, a bugle, 
and another round 11. So I finish this part by beading through a round 11 at the crossroads and my thread is hanging towards the middle of the motif. Liz is just watching today. Maria will also be later. Nitty just joined us also listening. Claire, I just realized that also that it looks like a Star of David. <laughs> so that can also be a, a symbol. So I'm getting to the next part now when I start to attach gem duos and round 15 seed beads in two colors around the gem duo beads. Also going to add finally those nice shiny uh, three millimeter uh, bicon beads. So I start by picking up two round 15s. I bead through a gem duo. Imagine it already how it will lay flat on your motive. So you are going, you need to bead now through the inside hole of the gem duo. You pick up two more round 15s and after this sequence of five new beads, you bead towards the outside through around 11 at the crossroads. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And to finish this part, I pick up two more round 15s. I bead through the outside, the open hole of the gem duo. I pick up a fourth group of fourth pair of round 15s and then I bead through a round 11 and the very first pair of round 15s that I added. So this is how it looks like. Every gem duo will be attached in between two round 11s at the crossroads, always the round 11s connected to the holes of the gem duo by pairs of round 15s in your first color. So how do you like, uh, like it so far? Is it going well or do you have any questions? Ladies are having some ideas. That's so nice. <laughs> so now we are completing the decoration around the first gem duo. To do that, I pick up six pieces of the round 15 in my se uh, second color. I bead through two round 15s, a round 11, and two more round 15s. Now I pick up two pieces of round 15, I pick up a bicone and one more round 15. And I bead through the round 11 in the opposite direction, that is at the outside corner of the triangle. I bead back through the last round 15 and the bicone. I pick up 
two more round 11s to complete this part. And I bid through two round 15s in the first color around 11 and two more round 15s to complete the frame around the gem duo. So this is how it looks like at the moment. Sarah's focusing. <laughs> so now we are going to attach the second gem duo. And what is very important to remember that if we look at this gem duo, then we can divide the gem duo and the decoration around it to two parts. The two parts are not identical. Towards the outside edge, the decoration consists of two plus two round 15s, a bicone, and another round 15 connecting the bicone to the round 11. And below that, also two plus two round 15s. But towards the middle of the star, we have two six plus two round 15s. We can divide this two plus six plus, plus two into two equal groups. So two plus three plus three plus two. And this part of two yellow and three uh, nickel plated beads, they will be the dividers between one and the, node and the next gem duo. And they will belong to the frame created by, from seed beads around the first gem duo and to the second gem duo too. So we will not double this part, but these five beads will belong to one frame and the other frame too. So I hope this is, this little explanation helps you. And let's look into it that how exactly do we do that? So in step 14, we are exiting a group of two round 15s in the first color. We pick up a gem duo, make sure to check the holes, both of them. Then we pick up two more round 15s in the first color and bead towards the round 11 at the crossroads. So again, the gem duo will be connected to the round 11s with pairs of round 15s. So now again, I pick up two round 15s. I bead through the outside hole, the open hole of the gem duo. And then I pick up the fourth group. I bead through a round 11 and two more round 15s. Cynthia is also focusing. <laughs> this is a challenging design. <laughs> there is so much to learn from it. So the gem duo is now attached by the pairs of round 15s. Now we create the full frame. So I bead through three round 15s here instead of picking up three new ones, this is the part which belongs also to the first frame and the second frame too. So I'm beading through three round 15s. Mm. And instead of six new beads, I pick up only three. And then I bead through the round 15s, the pair of round 15s in the first color, round 11, and two more round 15s. To complete the outside part of the frame, I pick up two round 15s in my second color, a bicone, 
and one more round 15 and I connect them to the round 11 on the outside. I beat back through round 15 and by cone. I make sure that there is no gap on my thread. There, there is no gap between the beads. I pick up two more round, 11, round 15s. And then I bead all around the gem duo also to pull the round 15s to each other and to get in position for the next part. So I stop once I have beaded through the round 11 at the crossroads. Have a nice weekend to Katy. Katy has to go now. She's going to a very interesting castle where Ruben stayed during holidays. Oh, wow. I hope that you will also see some paintings from him. Have fun, Katy. So, next step. Step 16 attaching the third gem duo. And during the following steps, we are going to do the same, always attaching a gem duo first with the first color of pairs of the round 15s in the first color, and then completing the frame by adding the second color of round 15s and a bicon bead. We are going to start it sometimes by beading towards the outside edge, sometimes by beading towards the middle of the star. So be careful and be, be very mindful of, uh, of, uh, of the direction of your thread, that if it's pointing once you cross the round 11 to get in position to attach the gem duo, if your thread is hanging towards the middle of the motif or if your thread is hanging towards the outside edge of the motif. Corinne says in the meanwhile that great design and she loves it. I love it too. It's a really cute one. actually made a mistake here. I don't need to pick up that last pair of round 15s. But instead, as I said, <laughs> the round 15s in this part, they belong to one frame and the second frame around the gem duos too. Now I'm adding the second color of the round 15s and the icon bead. Marta says this design has so many possibilities and indeed what is your idea, Marta? What would you like to make out of it? And everyone, what kind of possibilities are on your mind? You can easily create, I think, a bracelet too by connecting the tips of the star, stars. So that would make a very exquisite bracelet, I think. I'm picking up now three round seed beads in the second color, size 15, beading towards the edge. And 
and my goal is to get in position. to attach the next jump to wall. Anna has a question. I'm just wondering, on previous picture, you had three R15s before Bicon in step 15. That's a mistake. You need two there. I'm sorry for it. You need two. The two, you need three towards the middle of the motif, but only two towards the icon. As on, the, as on every other picture, there are only two. So please follow those. Not step 15, but on one part there are three round 15s. Only two in this part and towards the middle of three. And Martha says, it seems to be very stable, necklace, earrings. Indeed, this motif is so sturdy that the filigree that I have used, that's only an option, but not a necessity to make your jewel live long and prosper. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just a possibility. You don't need anything to make it sturdy. You can, of course, use this motif in your bead embroidery. I really love how Ginny does this. Of, uh, does that often. You can add the filigree like I did, but it's up to you. You can also decide to leave this on its own and just hang it, for example, from a nice pair of ear wires. <laughs> Sunshine says, like she's joking, us proofreaders need more coffee. Like I think with, with more complicated designs, it's like there is a high chance that we that we leave there a little typo, even if now four of us read the instructions, but there are so many steps, so many little details that often often there is a little mistake or a little typo. But I'm really glad that we can we are we can be uh, we can beat these designs together on Friday. So immediately you can ask and I can clarify so you you are not confused. Cynthia says she loves this filigree. She says it makes it look so beautiful and delicate. I love this shape too. I was so looking forward to finally use it in a juvo. By the way, or Zuzi is here. Zuzi, is it the filigree that you used for your Gisolmer motif, where you made that beautiful necklace with the pearls? I think it was, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So. If you are still here, then I'm curious. The filigree, by the way, it also comes from this historic collection that we have from this little family manufactory in the Czech Republic. And the filigrees are newly made, but the machines and the stamps, which are shaping the filigrees, some of them are actually a hundred years old. So every time when I'm working with a filigree from that collection, it feels it feels really special. <laughs> I 
as Uzi says she used the smaller one. They actually made a mistake. I forgot to cross the bike on before beating through the round 15s in the frame around the gem duo. So I needed to frog a little bit. So she says, by the way, that she cooks with one hand and follow us with another. <laughs> You're a real multitasker. <laughs> Katya is doing the same. So what I forgot to do is that I forgot to cross through the bicon. And only now I pick up the two round 15s. I beat through the Round 15 is all around the gem duos. By the way, I stopped like uh, really explaining the details after the first three gem duos because then we do over and over again the same same system. But if you have any questions, I did not see any questions about this part, so I hope that it's clear. But if you would like to clarify something, then I'm happy to answer. I'm attaching my fifth gem duo. has this four little legs of pairs of round 15s now from the yellow seed beads and now to make the connections complete I pick up two round 15s in my second color I pick up a bicon and another round 15 in the second color I cross the point the round 11 at the point and then I continue to complete the frame. Yay, we have questions! <laughs> Chris just joined us, by the way. Welcome. Cindy is asking, is that a size 15 on tip of the crystal? It's a size 11, Cindy. And you can download the full tutorial and the material list with the de uh, details from no one has to be the loan.com. And today and during the next two weeks, all the proceeds from the sale of the tutorial, it costs five euros, the PDF, it goes towards a charity supporting Ukrainian refugees. So thank you if you decide to download the PDF. And... Susie posted the link, thank you. Ludka says that she will do it later and probably she will make a brooch or a pendant also in blue and yellow and gold and even a bit of a bit of green. That sounds really nice, Lutka. Deb says she's not sure if she wants earrings or a small necklace. You can make a whole set, Deb. <laughs> and indeed, you can actually, you can decide if you would like to make something for your, for your neck, then you can go for a super small pendant. Okay, small by my taste. <laughs> I'm kind of megalomaniac when it comes to jewelry. But you can also join to each other 
some motives. As you can see, it's pretty easy to join them to each other through the round 11s on the corners. So imagine that you have three stars this way. It's up to you. And then from the middle of the uh, middle point towards the bottom, you can you can hang something, for example. And now I'm going to attach the sixth gem duo. So after crossing the round 11, I beat through two round 15s towards the middle. I pick up a gem duo and then using the beads that I added around the very first gem duo, I bead towards the outside edge through two round 15s and a round 11. And I attach the gem duo fully by filling in two more pairs of round 15s. After filling in the second pair, after crossing the gem duo, I beat through round 11 and two plus three round 15s towards the middle. Then I don't need to pick up any more round 15s in the middle. So I beat towards the edge through the already added ones. I cross the two yellow ones attaching the round 11 to the jump duo. And I complete the frame by picking up two round 15s, a bicom, and one more round 15. I beat through the round 11 on the corner. I beat back through the round 15 and the bicon, and I complete the frame by adding two pieces of round 15s. And now the biggest fun will happen. I'm adding the rhinestone in the middle. That's my favorite. <laughs> Oh, Faye has a great idea. She says, it looks like an avat might fit between. And I'm grabbing, I have the Titale earrings here next to me because I was taking a picture yesterday for the free tutorial and the blog article that I prepared for you. And there we have the navets in the metal clothes. And indeed, the size would be perfect, Faye. That's a great idea. Brit Marie agrees. <laughs> so I hope that someone will make it happen. So now I'm adding the rhinestone into the middle of my motif, clearing these extra beads from my bead mat now. And to do that, I bead through a round 11 and two plus two round 15s towards the edge. I do not bead through all three of them. I pick up the round 15 and then I opposite. I skip the first one. So my thread is coming from here and I will continue here. So I skip the very first one. And then I bead through two plus two round 15s plus around 11 towards the edge. So this is how it looks like at the moment. The rhinestone is still wobbly, <laughs> but I think the color is perfect. It's also calming down the design a bit because with the yellow seed bits, it became like cheerful and happy and the Montana color of the rhinestone makes it a bit more like, uh, uh, okay, a word that doesn't come to my mind, like more, uh, like calmer, sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> Deb is thanking for the tutorial. Thank you, Deb. But the idea actually came. I drew the tutorial, but the idea came from Beth or Sunshine in the Beading School Club. So she is, Sunshine is the designer of the of today's beautiful motif. And I really enjoy beading it because I really learned a new way of thinking while I was drawing the tutorial and beading the first pieces. So thank you so much, Beth. It really gave me a lot. It was a nice learning experience. In the meanwhile, I bead it through the seed beads around the gem duo to get on in position to attach the second hole of the Preciosa to one rhinestone. And after around 11, again, I bead it through two plus two, altogether four round 15s. I bead through the rhinestone itself. And then I bead continue through the outside edge of the star through two plus two, round 15 and around 11. And with this, my star is actually complete. My new yellow and turquoise blue Mary star is finished. I can secure my tail thread. I can find a nice brooch base or filigree if I want to attach it. And I can then secure my thread. And let me know, ladies, if you have any questions left. I'm really happy that you joined me today. And I would like to thank again Mary Beth for her generosity to donate the pattern to no one has to be the loan and also to everyone who decides to purchase the tutorial as we are going to uh, donate 100% of the income towards a charity supporting Ukrainian refugees. So Katy also says that she has to make one. I'm really looking forward, ladies, to see all your colors. Marta is asking if I went through both sets of holes. Yes, I did. For the second time, when I crossed the rhinestone, then I beat it through the second hole to, uh, to uh, attach it completely. So thank you so much, everyone. Wishing you a nice, creative, peaceful weekend. And see you next week on Tuesday uh, during coffee time with Erica. And actually, I will have some pretty big news for you. And I can't wait to share them with you. Bye-bye, everyone. Happy beading. And please keep sharing your beautiful creations in the Beading School Club. Bye-bye. <laughs>